All right, folks, it's true. I'm a wimp. What am I talking about? Well, we finally got a clear night outside, and I'm not going to set my my Celestron 8-inch edge out, outside there. Even though it's not too hard to wheel it out, it's going to be bloody cold tonight. It's, it's going down to the single digits, which is minus 15 Celsius, something like that. And it's... Even though I've got the ASI Air, it's still, I've, I've got to be outside for too long. And it, it's just too, it's going to be too cold to do it. For me anyways, that's why I'm saying I'm wimping out. I am going to do a reconnaissance mission with my other scope. Because that's, I can do everything inside. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'm Kurt Zapatello. You're watching Ask Request 1. So if you notice, I look for objects that are not imaged quite often. So I know there's a ton of other stuff in the Orion area, but this looks like it's my kind of object. It's it's not that well known. So that's all I want to do a test image of it anyways. Okay, so if all goes well, I'll show you what some of these test images look like. Okay, folks. Well, here it is, SH2278. And you can see a little bit of this outline right here. I'm taking three minute subframes with the HA filter and there is stuff there. So I'm gonna continue on this uh, object. Hopefully it'll I'll do pretty well. You can see I'm in Nina and I'm in the house. And by the way, it's five degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 15 Celsius. So it is pretty chilly out there tonight. So I'm not totally wimping out because I, I feel like I am at least imaging, even though I'm not out there with the edge. So anyways, I'm using the advanced sequencer. Now let me show it to you here. It's pretty handy, this advanced sequencer. And I didn't set it up from scratch. The way I use this advanced sequencer is I go in with the old sequencer, I set up my routine, and then I uh, bring it in to to the advanced sequencer. So I haven't really done one from scratch here yet, but I, I do this. So I'm in the process of learning how to do just that until I get more familiar with this advanced sequencer. And Hi, folks. So let me show you how I'm using the advanced sequencer now, finally, after all these years. And I'm doing it by using a method that Sean Nielsen from Visible Dark Astro came up with, and that's plugging it into the simple sequencer first and then importing it into the advanced sequencer. And I'm not that familiar with the advanced sequencer yet to start off by scratch, but if you do it this way, you you can do this and, until you get familiar with the advanced sequencer. So this is for anybody that's already downloaded the beta version of Nina, and that's where you get these nightly builds. So you open your Nina screen up and you wanna go to start a new sequence you come over to framing and you want to enter your object name and that's sh2278 and i'm just going to put e after it just for i don't want to screw around and i'm going to load image and it gives me this but this isn't this isn't it so what i have to do is i have to enter the coordinates uh, okay, and so I'm going to enter the RA, and you can look up the coordinates and any program like Stellarium or something like that. And then we load image, and voila, there it is. Perfect. So then what you do is you would come over here to add target sequence, and we were going to choose simple sequencer. And this looks very familiar. It looks just like the the normal basic sequencer in the the old version of Nina. Only there is a, uh, there is some new stuff up here. It, it does give you more options. Now let's take a look at these global options. You want to cool the camera to whatever camera you want. You want to have it unpark the mount, and you want to have the Meridian flip. So th this is globally set now. And at the end you want it to warm the camera and you want it to park the mount. Now you can turn all these off if you wanted to as well. And I'm gonna leave the delay sequence uh, normal, no sequence mode. You can do one after another or a loop. I'm just gonna do one after another. That's if you put more than one sequence in there. 
So I'm going to leave all these other things alone. Target options. I'm going to want it to slew to the target. I'm going to want to center the target. So it's going to plate cell. I don't have a rotator. I do want it to start guiding and autofocus. I do have an autofocuser, so I'm going to turn it on. And I want it to autofocus on every change. I'm going to leave this uh, elapsed time off and number of exposures. I usually press the, have it re auto focus after it does a certain amount, like 10 or 20%. So if the HFR values varies by 20%, then it's going to redo an autofocus. And here's where you can enable the filters. So let's say I want to do um, the time. Let's say I want to do a one minute, exp no, I'll do three minute exposures or 180 seconds. And let's say I want to do 20 exposures, the filter. Let's say I wanted to do the HA and binding, we'll leave that alone. Let's say I want to dither every, I'll just do every four images is going to dither. And let's say I wanted to do another filter. I can just press add right here. And this time I'm going to want to go with the O3. I can just put that and I'll leave everything else alone and I'm ready. If I wanted to start imaging, I'm ready. But this is the simple sequencer. The advanced sequencer looks like this. And the way to get the, to import this into the advanced sequencer is you use this button and watch what happens. I press it and it gives me this warning. Once it goes into the uh, advanced sequencer, you can't revert back, but that's okay. And here it is in the advanced sequencer. And this is what it, it, it looks like. It's much more complex. You can do a lot more with it, but I don't know how to do all this stuff with it yet. And it'll, the global triggers, it's going to do a meridian flip. It's going to cool the camera to minus 20 degrees. It's going to unpark the scope. And then it's in the, it goes to the target. So here's my first target. It's what I just made up, 278. And these are all these triggers. It's going to do loop conditions. Here's the exposures. It's set right in here. And this is all set. If I wanted to add another Seek uh, exposure. I'd have to come over here to smart exposure, and then you would just drag it into here, and you can change the filters. But it's actually pretty cool. And after it gets done doing the my target, my first target, it'll come over here and do the final thing, which was warm the camera and park the scope. Now, again, this advanced sequencer can do a lot more. You can do multiple exposures. You can have it start at certain times, end at certain times, and all sorts of neat things. But I don't know how to do all that yet. I hope to learn how to do it, but that'll be later. Okay, well, that's all I have for you, folks. Hope you learned something, and we'll see you later.